the roll muddler for Joy. Okay, the materials we need for the roll muddler is uh, Mustad. 9672. These are uh, basically a, a streamer hook. Two extra heavy, four extra long. Size six for tying. Mylar, silver, gold tinsel, double sided. Uh, mallard flank feathers for the tail and wings. Uh, gold wire for ribbing, optional. And crystal flash, pearl color. Hang on. Okay. Got it. And some Sally Hansen hard as nails to coat the fly yeah, with. Hold it there. Just gotta focus. Okay. And some red. Uh, six aught or three aught thread. Okay, I usually start by pinching the hook, the bar, but he doesn't need to, if he wants to. Go ahead, just keep going, I got this, yeah. We're uh, mounting the hook in the vise. Don't cover the barb. Make it tight enough so that it's not going to move like this. We're going to adjust the vise. Narrow the jaws a little bit to hold that hook. Start the thread at the front of the hook and just go back in uh, fairly close spirals to the bend of the hook. I'm going to stop part way up and cut off the tag of the thread and just go to the back where the bend starts. That's usually over the barb of the hook. Okay, and take some mallard flank feathers, uh, peel off the soft under stuff, you don't need that, you want to use the little stiffer feathers for the tails, and cut off maybe a little quarter inch or less, three, a little over an eighth of an inch for the tail. Pull it to the side to line up the tips. And then I'm going to cut it off the feather. You can roll it in your fingers a bit to line up the, to mix up the feathers a bit so they lie more straight. And then I'm going to measure roughly half the length of the hook which would be from halfway between the bend and the eye. And then I'm going to transfer this. So this, I have these two fingers established the length. Bring it up to where the thread is hanging. I'm going to grab it with my right hand. If you're left-handed, use your left hand or right hand. And find a couple of turns. Keep holding it on top of the hook. And then once you start, Make sure it's on top of the hook, and then I kind of roll it forward, catch it. This could be longer, up to the shank of the hook if you want. Next thing, we're going to tie some gold wire. Joy likes the gold wire rip so you take it to cut it with the back of the scissors so you don't ruin your sharp scissor point tie this in a bit fold 
little bit of the wire back just so that it's not going to slip out on you. And then you just tie it to the back, go right back to the bar, the uh, point on the barb again. Stop. Put the wire in the material holder. Next we're going to tie the body, which is gold, silver, mylar. You have to cut off enough to go from the front to the back and then back out. Now we're going to go front and tie this in if you want the silver side up put the gold tie it in right. on the side or on top okay that's golds on top okay a couple of wraps to trap it and then I'm gonna put a little bit of Sally Hansen on there to Reinforce the thing to hold it better. Close the bottle so you won't spill it on your wife's <laughs> table. Then you flip it over. I'm going to tie the silver side up. In fairly close turns, going to the back. Now back to the front. get to the tie off point to the front you take the thread in behind the mylar trap it then once in front of the mylar that traps the wire in place and then a couple more turns in behind cut it off now the body's done I'm gonna coat this again with Sally Hansen just to Hopefully it'll last a little longer when the fish bite it. And take the wire. Now you can wind this before it dries or after, it doesn't matter, but I'm going to wind it while it's still wet just to save time in fairly open spirals maybe a sixteenth or a little wider apart can you see that on the camera? Mm -hmm. okay. again in behind the wire once or twice in front that Trap the wire, cut it off with the back of the scissors, and I'm going to push it down just so it doesn't cut my thread. I'm going to have to, just going to wrap a couple of wraps here, 
It's going to be basically our throat in the front of the head. Oh, maybe a quarter inch of red thread here. Where we're going to tie our wing and our head in. I got to wait for that to dry. You can turn it off if you want until it dries. And I'm going to silver wire just to reinforce it. Smooth it out a bit with the dubbing needle and give it a chance to set. After spreading the uh, Sally Hansen with this dubbing needle, I have some material left on there, some Sally Hansen, so I push it back and forth in here. You now it is film canister with Brillo pad in it, and it takes off the uh, the uh, head cement, or Sally Hansen, or whatever you're using. So it cleans your brush. No, yeah, it cleans the needle. Cleans the needle. That's right. that. After you can so, tie a bunch at this stage, and then just keep going in mass production while they're drying. Yeah, you could go up to here, put your Sally Hansen on, and then once they all dry. Instead of doing one at a time. So do you need multiple vices or? No, you take this out, put it on a piece of foam, let it dry. You can half hitch this. Or, or do it. Wood finish. Using the wood finish, you can cut it off. And then start another one. Or you just carry on from here like we're going to do. It's already dry. So we'll go to the next step. So we're going to go to the next step. Which is the deer hair wing. Okay, this is just uh, home, home cured deer hide. You can buy that at any fishing store? Well, you can buy it. Usually you buy it and it's... Uh, what do you call it? A bag full. No, it's, it's uh, tanned. It's so oh, it's soft. Oh, pre-tanned, yeah. This is harder, mm -hmm. but it's free. Free? <laughs> well, it was free. The guy that shot the deer, we tanned it. And uh, but you can buy these in the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah deer hair. Use uh, wait, deer hair for the, for the tail. We take off a bunch of... Oh... Maybe an eighth of an inch thick, or brush out the under fur, get rid of all this, the short hairs in there, and the <laughs> under fur, it's hard to see with all that fuzz, that'll mm -hmm. keep the hair from stacking. And any short hair from the other end, then I need my stacker, which I forgot. Nice, but I guess I'm not. Ow! Then you stab yourself with a hook. <laughs> I don't have it up there. I don't know. What's the stagger look like? That thing looks like a bottle or a vase. Here it is. Remember to talk it out of the side of your mouth? Yeah, okay. There's a stagger here. There's a stagger. What's a hair stagger? Oh, that thing. Pieces, this thing here. Mm -hmm. You put the hair in there. Okay, let's hang on. You put the hair in there like that. Yeah, just uh, kind of maneuver it till it's all in there. Kind of push it down. If you get the odd one that's crooked, doesn't want to go, just throw it out. Then you, I kind of put my hand over the top to keep it from bouncing out. Tap it, it lets them go down, lines up the tips. Okay, hang on, don't, don't, don't walk into the camera fast, right? Okay, well. Uh, here, just okay. let me, okay, let me, I'll bring it to you. That's pretty self-explanatory, you just line up the tips so that the tail's not staggered all over. All right, looks good. 
pull it out. Okay. Now the trick is not to handle this stuff too much. You still may have the odd hair that's out of place. Mm -hmm. Take it, throw it out. Now I'm going to grab it with my left hand, or Joey would grab it with his right hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm going to measure this from the back of this red thread to just short of the tail, a little slightly shorter than the tail. Okay, see that? Even with this, that's going to establish the length of this for me. Now once I grab it here, that's going to be my tie-in point. So I'm going to cut this just a little bit shorter and this will form part of the collar and so right there, if I haven't I haven't taken my fingers off of there, so that's gonna keep. It'll flare a little bit, and then you want to just go back with real light thread wraps, so that it keeps the ties brings the wing down a bit. Okay. I'm going to trim this off mostly because I'm going to tie some crystal flash which is optional but I think the crystal flash gives it a bit of a then I'm going to tie this through the hair and tie it down good so it's not going anywhere but don't go too far back to where you're going to flare that tail again or that wing you don't want the wing to stand up too much the deer hair is hollow so it will stand up or a flare. Looks pretty good. Next is a piece of... These are usually what, six, eight inches long. I find that for a fly this size... This is your crystal flash, right? Crystal flash. Pearl glass and crystal flash. Because mm -hmm. it's... I'll take only half of it. That's all I need. I don't want a lot of flash. If you want more flash, you could take the whole thing. I'll cut a piece off. Okay. Fold it in half. Even it off. Cut it. And I've got two pieces. So I'm going to do is take these two pieces. There's a straight hair. I get rid of that. Bring this around the thread. Just something to grab it. Now I've got four pieces of tinsel and I bring the thread just forward a bit. Okay, I'm gonna bring this thread straight up, bring the crystal flash down against the body, trap it, and then wrap back three, four turns towards the mm -hmm. back. Cut it off about even with the deer hair. Doesn't matter if you cut it a little bit longer or a little bit shorter. That's it. Now we're going to do the head. Hang on. Let me take a look at my sample here. Yeah. Now get the wing in. Should be a little bit shorter than that, maybe, but that's good. And we're going to cut a bunch more deer hair, this time a bigger bunch. Off the hide, put a pencil width. Clean out the hairs. Where's my dubbing nail? Pull up the short hairs from the back. Grab it maybe halfway down and start taking out these guard hairs. Doesn't matter if you get them all out or not. This one we're not going to stack. But it's still nice to get all that junk out. It'll float a little better. Then I'm going to take these. Kind of grab it. <laughs> Just because I'm trying to show them how easy it is. Just grab it towards the front here. I'm going to even off the, the things here and 
you cut these short so they don't get mixed up with your wing and cut the wing off. So I end up with maybe one inch of this hair trimmed both ways, three quarters to an inch. Put it on. I'm going to transfer it from my left hand to my right hand. And I'm going to try and hold most of it on top of the hook. Just take two wraps. And then when you cinch it down, it kind of takes you back to basically one wrap of the thread. And you get a little tighter, and then a little tighter. You got it. You can let it go. Bring it, the thread to the front. I'm going to do... Still got a little bit of room in the front, so I'm going to do one more stack. A little smaller this time. Or cut the back off. Actually, that's the front of the Harris, so it doesn't matter if it's a little bit uneven because we're going to trim this. Gonna bring this back, lay this on top, grab it, and then come down again two turns, bring it down tight. Try and keep it. If you want the red to show underneath, keep this on top and hold it tight, then a little bit tighter. And you bring it forward, and now I've got hardly any, you know, I'm almost to the eye of the hook, just a slight. But there I'm going to take the half hitch tool, do one half hitch over the eye, just to lock it in place so I don't lose anything. And if, if you've got this right, the thread hanging down should hold the tension anyway, but just to be safe. Now I'm going to take the half hitch. Gonna, this is the hard one. The front, put over the front the hook, around the back, and then back over the top. And there you have what I call a figure four. Okay, and then I'm going to sneak my hand in here, pull all this hair back, and then wrap this over each other five, six times. The hair, the half hitch is done, pull it tight, and we're ready to trim the hair. I'm going to cut this off. I usually put a little bit of Sally Hansen on there too, just to put a little bit of Sally Hansen on the front to soak into the thread. Okay, now you get, I know I've got some head cement in the eye. You don't want it to get hard, so I've taken a piece of this uh, feather and cut off all the fluff off the bottom. Just so it fits, it doesn't leave any stuff in the eye. Cut this off. Then I'm going to run this through the eye. And it'll pick up all that wet head cement and it'll leave your head nice and clean clean for let it let that dry a bit and then we're going to trim it that's a roll muddler i could have probably maybe put a little more deer hair on there but <laughs> really you need more hair than that uh, for the wing but he can uh, oh you mean the back part the tail or whatever yeah. I did, the, all the instructions say to tie it very sparse, mm -hmm. so you can you can tie it whatever you want, but it's supposed to work better when it's sparse. Okay. So we let that dry. Let it dry, and then we take it out and trim it. That's basically all the procedures. That's basically except it. for the trim. Except for the trim, and you trim it based on how you like it. Uh, no buzz cut, uh, I just like the way I've seen it in the picture. I forgot the mallard wing. Hmm? Where's the mallard wing? Show us the picture. This is what it's supposed to look like. It's 
supposed to look like that. And dummy We're cause close. forgot to put the mallard wing in before tying the... The head? You got to do that before, before that? Before tying the deer hair. And so we missed start, a step. Start again. <laughs> we missed the step. We did. Son of a gun. It'll okay. still fish, but it's not going to have the same. That's okay. why it looks so sparse. This is why it looks this so This is sparse. what we're aiming to tie. This is what you're aiming to tie. Yeah. And this is what you got. Before we trim it. I could cut that all off and start again, but... So hmm. we're missing just something along the, the body, I guess? Before tying the deer hair in, we yeah. should have cut another bunch of mallard wing and tied it in as a wing before the deer hair. Ah. Uh, we forgot the mallard wing. So you do that first before you do the the deer hair. The deer hair. Again. Oh, that's fine. I think it's so the tie, tying process is pretty much the same, right? Yeah. You loop after, it around. After tying the tail, doing the uh, gold wire, the gold or the silver body and the and the rib. Okay. The next step should have been to tie the mallard wing. And the mallard wing should be just a little bit shorter than the tail. And then a sparse deer hair head on top of that, a deer hair wing. The deer hair, everything coming on top is shorter than the previous one just by a bit. Ah, blew that bro. Anyway, we'll trim it without the thing. And by tying most of the hair on top, when you trim it, you'll see a little bit more of the, the red. So it's like trimming your pubes. Yeah, well, I don't know if you're <laughs> trimming mine, but... <laughs> This it just becomes a creative moment. Yeah, it's like uh, in shortness, a little bit of time. Like I told Joey, it's pretty hard to glue hair back in, so <laughs> take it off a little bit of time. And feel from the back. So this is the. Uh, this is where it the takes one out. the one he feels is going to do it for him. Yeah, well he likes this one. Now I'm going to basically trim the head back to where the, almost to the same length as the, that base of red hair that I had. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now that I got the basic shape, just to trim it down a little bit more. Almost looks like a triceratops head. Well, yeah. <laughs> Whatever shape. Mm -hmm. sticking out. You could trim it until there's no hair left. <laughs> now if we'd have, had that know, other deer hair in there. Yeah. This one could probably, I'm going to trim this head just a little bit so smaller. I think this is too, too long on the side here. Likes it a little fur. You can cut the head any shape you want. Mm -hmm. Once he starts tying it, you can try different sizes. And but according to these guys, keep it sparse. 
Now, if I'd have had the mallard flank no. underneath here. You can't add the mallard flank after, right? No, because then it's, well, it changes the profile. Just change the profile. So the, the, the last thing on there is the deer hair, the wing, and then the head. Hmm. That's what it's supposed to look like, anyway. Mm -hmm. right. Close. Just missing one. If you want to do another one up to the that point and take it from that point, but oh, that's fine. I'm sure you can figure it out. If you can't, and there you have it. Time flies with cause. And what's this? Oh, there's tail. Okay. Tail. Okay. Then you tie on the rib. Rib. The, uh, and then the head. Mylar tinsel. Okay. And then put the gold or silver on top, whichever you want. You line the tinsel from the front to the back and then again and coat it with Sally Hansen. Then put wind the rib to the front, tie it off with the thread, half hitch it, and then you can put another coat of Sally Hansen on top of the rib. It just keeps the fly from falling apart when a rainbow trout bites it, they have fairly sharp teeth. After you've got the body in, then I should have tied the I lost it. In your wife's I should, have, I should have tied the mallard wing. Mallard wing first. And the mallard wing would be roughly twice as thick as the tail, maybe a little bit more. And that's what you would use for your mallard wing right there? The mallard wing would go underneath, then the deer hair going between there, which I forgot. Okay. okay. Then the deer hair, the mallard wing is slightly shorter than the tail, and the deer hair is slightly shorter than the mallard wing. Then you put on four, piece, four pieces of crystal flash, or four, you can put more on what you want. You don't need a lot of flash on this fly. And then you do the head. And then trim it. All Except right. uh, Pantaloni forgot the uh, the mallard wing. So here's. There's one with the mallard wing and without it. Just a little more fuller body. Eh? This is a smaller size. This is a size uh, 8 hook. This is a size 6 hook. To hold them closer together. Okay, so here's your end result there. Oh, oops. I can put it on a piece of foam if you want to. So basically. Okay, here's your. Hang on. I'm trying to get it. This, wing, this, this deer there. hair wing should have been okay, slightly so shorter. So there's your uh, end result here, and here's the one with the mallard wing, right? Yeah. Mallard wing underneath the. If he has another problem, we can reshoot this next year. <laughs> All right. Fly tying with coal. I guess that's easier then. So you did have a little bit of the red throat showing through there, and that's. I think it makes a difference. They say by having some red. Yep. There. I guess it sort of imitates gills theoretically. Sure. Know. Bloody bloody gill. All right. Keep, well, keep the head sparse. Keep the head sparse. When he runs out of deer hair, I can send him some more. Ah, oh, lots of deer hair in those fly tying oh, shops. Yeah. You saw what they had in London. There was like bags of that shit, right? Well, at one time it was really hard to come by. Yeah. Not anymore. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for doing that, Cole. Okay. Come on, Cokes. You're on film now.
coming, John. Meant to be. We're not going anywhere. There's fish here. <laughs> I kept praying that that hook would not come in. Yeah. <laughs> well, it looks like you got him. Yeah, you got hooked. peppers in there. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing with Johnny there. Look at me, John. That same thing he almost replayed. Maybe you give up. Okay, I, I don't believe this now. He's going to replay it better. No. He must have called someone. <laughs> what, is it? what are the odds of getting mushrooms and fish <laughs> in the same spot? I tell you, we're doing good hooking <laughs> fish in this water right now. Way to go, John. Tell you the truth, if I was here on my own, I wouldn't have stopped here. No, it's a sleeper, eh? Yeah, it's a little sleeper. The sandbar over here. Oh. No. Let you go, eh? Oh! 